Hello. Today, in this video, we are going to look at a brief introduction to the whole concept of assisted GPS. And then this will set us up for several modules on assisted GPS. So we're going to begin with a review of the basics of the GPS system itself. Remember, it's, it's very simple ideas. How does GPS work? Satellites transmit their positions. You measure ranges to the satellites. Several ranges from several known positions give you your position. And that's all there is to it. Now, what about assisted GPS? Well, it's equally simple in concept. Instead of the satellites transmitting their positions, some network provides you with the satellite positions. And so we show this graphically like this. For now, we'll pretend that the data is coming in these little square waves. We know, of course, that the data is modulated as a BPSK signal on the sine wave. But just for the purposes of, of representation, we imagine data as a square wave in this picture. And the PRN code is the modulated sine wave here. And so the first thing that you'll notice, of course, is that if the data comes over a network and your network is a very fast data link, which it typically is for a cell phone, you can get the data much quicker than you can get it from the satellite. Remember, the satellite transmits data at a very leisurely 50 bits per second. And a cell tower is going to transmit data at something like a megabit per second. So you get that data much faster or even in advance of using your GPS. And so it saves the receiver the bother of decoding the data. But there's some more profound effects of assisted GPS, which is that you can increase the sensitivity of the receiver. And the, the reason for that is it's, it's much easier to detect the PRN code when signals are weak, such as when you're inside a building, as we've demonstrated here. And so what we're showing in this picture is that the, the notion that the PRN code will make its way into a building, even though the data from the satellite will not. And so through this module, we're going to explore that idea. And so to summarize then, the big idea of assisted GPS is simply this, provide satellite data over another communication link. And then you can start to do other things. Because of that, you can reduce the search space. Remember the search space that we just looked at in detail in the previous video? That search space can be reduced in advance of searching it. And because of that, you could have a much faster receiver. And indeed, if you then build receivers with something called massive parallel correlation, which we'll look into in, this, in the other videos in this module, you, you can get very fast time to first fix, TTFF, and get almost instant GPS, where you switch on your cell phone, or you switch on the GPS in your cell phone and get a GPS fix almost right away. And if you dwell, because you have less search space to search, you can dwell much longer in each of those code frequency search cells that we looked at in the previous video. And because you dwell longer and integrate longer in each cell, you can get much higher sensitivity. And so assisted GPS can give us these two things, instant GPS and indoor GPS, or higher, more technically speaking, high sensitivity. The system will look like this for assisted GPS. You have the satellite, and the satellite produces the search space that we have to search to find the signal, just as we looked at in the previous video. But now we have a network, like a cellular network. And somewhere connected to that network, you have a, lo a location server, which is basically a GPS receiver connected to a computer. And it's observing the signals from the satellite and providing this assistance data, shown here, this whole set of assistance data here. And so let's, let's look through each of these in, in um, one at a time to see what they can do for us. Let's, let's begin with time. So the cell tower can tell you what time it is. And if it knows that time very precisely, i.e. to better than a millisecond, then this space, remember, is the code delay. This is one millisecond. That's, that's how much the PRN code can change before it repeats itself. So if time is known to better than a millisecond, then you can reduce that search space to a much smaller space, and your GPS doesn't have to search so much time. So that's the simplest one to understand, also the hardest one to implement, because for a cell tower to be synchronized to within a millisecond of GPS is 
not necessarily the case. In fact, most cell towers are not synchronized to that accuracy today. And so, so we mentioned that one first to say, OK, th think about that and, and now set it aside. And now we can look at frequencies. So we looked at the, the, the size of the frequency offset in the previous video. And you remember that most of this came about from the satellite motion itself causing the Doppler offset. And so one of the things that the assistance data will do is allow you to calculate the expected Doppler of the satellite. And by, it'll do that by giving you your approximate position, namely to, to within about three kilometers. And the cell tower location is known accurately. And when you're communicating with a cell tower, you're usually within three kilometers of it. And that's how a cell tower can tell you your location to about three kilometers. And they can cell tower can at least give you time to about one second accuracy. And if it then gives you either the almanac or the ephemeris, each of those describes the satellite's orbits, or something called acquisition assist, which is really just the expected Doppler at the location of the cell tower. Any one of those three things combined with your time and position will give you the expected frequency for a particular satellite. So instead of searching this whole space out here, which we just looked at in the previous video, you only have to search the smaller space. And so by combining these two things, whether if you have accurate time, then you can narrow that search space. And even if you don't, you can at least always narrow the Doppler search space. You have much less of a code frequency space to search. And that's the, at the heart of assisted GPS, which we're going to look at over the next several videos.